Okay, hang in there. Don't press the stop button. You always wanted to be an airline pilot. Here's a chance to sit through what I would call old school training. Hang on. Military style training awaits. Hope you enjoy. My name is Captain James Weatherly. I'll be sharing during this video landing techniques for minimizing brake temperatures in the Boeing 747 Classic Freighter. During landings at or near the maximum certified landing weight, improper techniques can cause high brake temperatures, resulting in lengthy ground times for cooling, or in extreme situations with overheats, the thermal plugs can melt, causing deflation of the tires and a further delay. The techniques described in this video are ones which will minimize and mitigate these type situations. Here are the items we're going to examine. One, the importance of maintaining proper target speed. Secondly, the importance of touching down in the touchdown zone. Thirdly, the proper use of reverse and auto brakes in combination. And finally, the most important factor, the use of the full runway length. The first technique actually begins during the last portion of your approach phase. Make sure you maintain the proper target airspeed. Remember, even with calm winds, you have a 5 knot additive over your 1.3 VSO. Therefore, if you maintain extra airspeed, that energy has to go somewhere. It will result in extra braking, creating more heat in the brakes, and therefore rising brake temperatures. The second technique is a touchdown in the touchdown zone. For the 747, the pilot should aim at the 1500 foot mark as shown by the marks inside the green box. This will result in a touchdown of the main gear at the touchdown marks shown in the blue box. If you land long, the only way to stop the aircraft is more braking. More braking transfers energy and makes heat and causes hot brakes. The third technique involves the use of reverse thrust in combination with the auto brake system. Southern Air's procedure is to select minimum for all approaches and landings except in conditions of short runways or wet, slippery, icy runways or a non-normal configuration. Upon touchdown, the pilot will see the auto spoilers deploy and should select reverse thrust maximum as soon as possible. Now, during this time, the auto brakes at minimum will modulate, slowing the aircraft down in combination with the thrust reversers. One thing to note is the auto brake system reduces the amount of pressure. You cannot apply full pressure using auto brakes minimum, where if you have the auto brakes off, your pedals have 3,000 PSI available. I suggest using the auto brake system till an airspeed well below 100 knots, then have the non-flying pilot or the flight engineer disarm the auto brakes that's even smoother than pressing on the pedals manually. Some line pilots have developed a procedure immediately upon touchdown of disarming the auto brakes from the minimum position. Probably this comes from their feeling that there is a hard braking as Boeing calls it the overshoot in minimum braking so that the pilot will feel the brakes working. Selecting the auto brakes off is just like pumping the anti-skid. You completely defeat the system. Leave it on. It will apply the minimum pressure, less than you can do, in conjunction with the thrust reverses. And once you get slowed below 100 knots, clearly decelerating, that's the time to disarm. The final technique, which is the biggest factor in reducing and minimizing brake temperatures is use the full runway length. At the maximum certified landing weight, there is no reason to make an early turnoff. Use the full runway length. 
Now, you may need to coordinate this with the tower at busier airports. For example, here at Kuala Lumpur, you would advise the approach controller and the tower to confirm that, that you'll be making a turnoff at the end. I've circled a couple of turnoffs in yellow. Those are ones he's thinking you're going to turn off at. But instead, tell him you'll be turning off at the end at Charlie 3 or Charlie 2. He'll coordinate that, be no problem, and your brakes will be much, much cooler. A few little last-minute items regarding brake temperatures. First of all, when you taxi, and you may be lighter, obviously, than takeoff, always slow the airplane down to a little under 10 knots, then let the brakes go. Do not ride the brakes. That will further increase heating. Secondly, the flight engineer's panel has a brake temperature indicator, but it takes several minutes, up to 15 minutes, to register correctly. So if you turn off and immediately ask the flight engineer what do the brakes look like, you're not going to receive an accurate temperature reading. Do plan on using all these techniques, but remember you must bring the airplane to a stop or slow it down so you can make a turn at the end of the runway. Do not allow these procedures to preclude that all-important fact.